All right, welcome back to the synth shed. Today we're going to look at how you can use your push controller as a MIDI controller for Logic Pro. Why would you want to do that? Well, if like me, your main DAW is Ableton and you have a push, but you also use Logic for certain things and would like to be able to use push, which is a big, big hunk of machinery sat on your desk, plugged in via USB, ready to go as a controller. If you want to use it in Logic, out of the box, it doesn't work. But there's a very simple workaround I'm going to show you, which means you can use it in Logic. And not just for the 64 pads for entering MIDI notes and recording MIDI like that, but also functions like scale, like the repeat button, like the certain Max for Live devices to generate sequences. You can use that and record all that MIDI in Logic with Logic Instruments. So let's get into it. It's a very straightforward setup. You don't need any special software to make this work, but you do need to go into the operating system and do a really quick setting in audio and MIDI. There's probably a similar workaround in Windows, but I don't know, I don't have Windows computers, so if anyone figures it out, just drop a note in comments for other people to use. Also I should say, I'm using Push 3. If you have Push 3 standalone, as I do, you have to make sure it's in controller mode like that push is controlling live it may work with push 2 as well what we're doing today i suspect it works fine but i can't test it so can't guarantee it will okay into the setup then right first thing we've got to do as, a, as i said is a really simple system setting i'm using search to find uh audio midi setup that comes up just make sure if you don't see it straight away go to go to the um menu window show midi studio which brings this window up and what we're looking for in here is just one thing. Ignore this clutter, all my different MIDI devices. IAC driver, and you'll see at the moment device is online, is unchecked. So it's it's not live. This is what we want to switch on. And what this does is basically act as a sort of virtual MIDI port, which is going to connect Ableton and Logic and pass MIDI signals from Ableton into Logic. Now we've clicked that box, just check the settings here, port, bus one, MIDI in one, MIDI out one, just make a note of that. If for any reason you don't already have by default this here, in fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete this one just to show you. If you come here and it just says this, no available port, all you do is click the plus button and it takes care of it. Bus one, MIDI in, MIDI out. So we're done with that. We're done with uh, MIDI Studio and once that setting is done once, in my experience, it's kind of permanent. So you don't have to worry about that again. Now, settings in Ableton. First of all, let's just check our MIDI settings and have a look at something because I want to see, just show you, yes, the IAC driver bus one is, is now listed in the MIDI ports that are available to us. So I'm going to close that again for a second. That was just a check. And now we create a MIDI track. And I'm just going to rename that push input because that's basically what it is. In our MIDI settings here, we're gonna change it. Instead of all ins, we're just gonna select from push. There it is. So that just means that when we're using push, that's receiving the signals. And you can see the little MIDI indicators at the top here where my mouse is and here in the channel. So we, we're good. We have our MIDI coming from the controller. So far, so simple. A couple more things to do on this MIDI track, which is press in, so it's um, constantly monitoring those signals. And then we need to set the MIDI output. We now have MIDI options here available to us. And one of them, of course, is IAC driver bus one. That's what we want. It defaults to channel one. Remember from the settings, that's, that's what bus one was on and that's what we're using, so that's fine. That's it, basically that's done. The IAC driver is gonna virtually send it into Logic. So let's move to our Logic window now. And let's just do the quick settings we need to do in here. If we go into settings and go to MIDI, and if you're not there already, go along to this one that says inputs, which I've now clicked. And you might not see it straight away, you have to scroll down. Right at the bottom here, you'll see IAC driver bus one. Now that's already checked. Obviously, if for any reason it isn't, you check it. Now Logic knows it has IAC driver available to it. And all we have to do now is open a software instrument track here. I've already done this. I've already loaded a Logic instrument here, RetroSynth. We just need to sort out the MIDI input settings for this track. So hit the track panel, come down here, and you'll see here MIDI input. At the moment it says all, which is fine because you might have other MIDI things connected. But if you just want to exclusively have this channel affected by the push input from Ableton, 
then let's put that so it focuses solely on that IAC driver, that signal that's coming through. We're already on channel one, which is the right channel. So they're, they're speaking to each other, in other words. Now, if we close that dialog, You'll notice I've already record armed and selected this track, so it's live and it's listening for input. And what we should see now when I start playing the push is our MIDI signals firing in Ableton, and then we should hear sound coming out of retro. So put my headphones so that I can actually monitor what, what's happening. Yeah, and we have, there we go. So that's, that's push working as a MIDI controller. You can switch your focus now to Logic, and carry on using as long as Ableton's open in the background and you have that virtual MIDI wiring set up like we do. And you can do this on as many instrument tracks as you like and use push as your MIDI input. And let's just quickly hit record on this track and All right, not very exciting, but you can see, just wanted to show you that it's actually recorded all those notes. Great. Um, so we can input, we can record. What else can we do? Well, one of the nice things we can do is go into scale mode on the push and make use of it. So at the moment we are set on, let's go back to C. No doubt we recognize the minor blue scale. But if we want to go, say, to Lydian, we can. And if we want to go to minor and switch key, uh, root keys, change the layout. Everything you can do on a push in controller mode on Ableton in terms of no input you can pretty much do here. So that's the basics. Another nice thing you can do, if we just get rid of that, we're gonna reopen cut. our live session, or rather re reopen the window, and then going back to this push input channel, which we set up. Like I said, you can't add VSTs as instruments and MIDI devices, because it will block the MIDI output, but you can add Ableton MIDI devices and Max for Live devices if you have them, like sequencers and generators. I'm going to add in Melodic Steps here, which is one of the new sequencer packs that were launched with the Live 12. Actually, you can see I did some videos about those when they were launched. If you want to know more about how any of these work, go and check those out. Link above, hopefully. But um, if we just hit play on, on our push, now you should hear what that's doing is sending melodic steps, MIDI information through our virtual cable straight into Logic. And as we did before, we can, of course, hit record, start capturing that. There we go. Just stop that a sec. That's not a very interesting sequence right now. Um, but just an example. And similarly, we can go into X for Live stuff. I can load up my favorite, which is Sting. I can get rid of melodic steps, hit play on push. There we go. That, that MIDI information is being passed through to Logic, which we can again record. And that will give you a better idea of what's going on. As well as some automation on the plugin. Let's just stop that again. And if I just open up that MIDI, you'll see what it's caught there great so it's another thing we can do with this configuration we can use max for live and ableton's built-in sequencing tools and it's got a lot of fun stuff like that with any logic plugin so we can kind of combine the best of both worlds what you're probably thinking though is that these doors aren't actually synced so it's going to take a lot of fit to get those notes back on time, back on the grid. Okay, simple fix. Ableton has its link capability. Turn that on. 
and you'll see you should have updated also in the software there you go and this just shows you that link is active so it's sending out a pulse and as you'll see over here logic receives link so that is already synchronizing itself to the tempo from live automatically it's a brilliant feature so you'll see as i update the tempo in live i can do it actually over here on the push you know see logic following great which now means when we record arm our synth which we'll do again here over in logic and start recording logic and hit play on the push now as you can see we have all our notes perfectly on the grid capturing logic so a few tips there hopefully useful to you if you're using logic and you have a push controller sat on your desk just gets even more use out of what's quite an expensive device let me know what you think did this work for you any problems drop a note in the comments